Okay, so uh, we're back. Um, we're still on chapter, I think it's nine or 10. Oh, 10. Um, we're in the second half of chapter 10. They're driving to Alabama. Um, you know, they've been through Ohio, the Ohio style wet rest stops. I want you to know that they have do have normal toilets in Ohio. Although uh, last year when I read this story to my class, um, for one of the breaks, I think maybe spring break, I went to Ohio to visit my family and um, I found, um, it must have been February break, um, but anyways, while I was there, I found um, an outhouse. And so of course I took a picture and shared it with the class. Um, so, okay, I was, out, I was out through most of Kentucky, even though we stopped at some more Ohio style rest stops. I was so tired that I even used a couple of outhouses but I kept the door open and made dad stand outside so in case I fell in, he'd be able to pull me out. The next time I woke up, we were pulled over at a Tennessee rest stop. There were no bathrooms and no outhouses or anything, just a pump and a picnic table. When dad turned the headlights off, everything disappeared into the blackest night anyone had ever seen. As we looked out of the windows, mama checked her notebook, then announced, this is the Appalachia Mountains. We're over 6,000 feet above sea level. This is higher than we've ever been before. And she didn't sound real happy about it either. All four doors of the Brown Bomber opened and the weird Watsons got out. As soon as everyone was awake enough to look around, we all bunched up and hugged up around Mama and Dad, even cool Byron. Dad laughed, what's wrong with you guys? Daddy, look how scary it is here, Joey said, pointing at all the giant shapes in the darkness. Nonsense, pumpkin. Those are just the mountains. What Dad was calling just the mountains were the scariest things I'd ever seen. On every side of us were great big black hills, and behind the, these were even bigger, blacker hills, and behind these were the biggest, blackest hills. It looked like someone had crumpled up a pitch black blanket and dropped the weird Watsons down in the middle of it. The air up this high didn't seem right either. It made you feel like something bad was going to happen. If this was a movie, there would be loud, scary organ music playing right now. Mommy, Joey asked, sounding real scared. Where did all these stars come from? We all looked up, and instead of seeing the normal amount of stars, it looked like there had been a star explosion. There were more stars in the sky than empty space. That's because the air is so clean here. This looks like the sky in Birmingham. Also, friends, sometimes uh, out in the country, uh, you see a lot more stars because um, there's not as many lights as there are in cities or even sometimes towns. Not as much here in Amherst, but if you go to a big city, you don't see any stars. Um, Flint is a medium-sized city, so it might be too well lit for you to see a lot of stars. Up close to us in the rest stop, all we could see was the pump. It looked like a deformed, evil, one-armed space robot. As our eyes got used to the dark, we could see the picnic table and behind it that black woods. Most of the time, Mama and Dad don't like arguing in public, but Mama was real hot. She said, well, do you see what your nonstop driving has done? Do you see? Instead of being in a motel, you've driven us straight into H-E double hockey stick. I'm not going to say it. Um, that got everyone's attention because Mama almost never cusses. This really scared me. I know it's stupid, but before I could stop telling myself, I said, AT double hockey stick? <laughs> we'll see if some of you can figure what that is. Um, I thought you said this was Tennessee. Joey started boo-hooing right away. After we nervously nibbled on snacks, everyone sat on the same side of the picnic table. Me and Bai had to go to the bathroom in the woods. We found two trees where we could keep our eyes on each other and said, Bai, do you think there are snakes out here? Snakes? I ain't scared of no snake. It's the people I'm worried about. I stopped looking out at the ground and began watching the back black woods. What people? I wish I'd picked a tree closer to Byron. Didn't you hear mama say this was Appalachia? So? Man, they got crackers and rednecks up here that ain't never seen no Negroes before. If they caught you out, if they caught you out here like this, they'd hang you now, then eat you later. What's a redneck? A hillbilly, only worse. Some of them don't even speak English. We made a break for the brown bomber. If Byron was trying to scare me, he was scaring himself too. 
I went so fast, though, I felt a couple of warm drips dribbling down my leg. This time, I couldn't blame it on Joey's drooling either. But I didn't care. Having a little pee in your pants had to be better than being dinner for some redneck. We loaded the car back up, and no, and no one really relaxed until Dad drove back out on I-75 and turned the headlights on. The lights knocked some of the darkness out of the way, and, and we felt safe again. Everybody was better and laughing and talking a mile a minute. I can't believe how the air feels, Dad said. He was right. Everything smelled light and green. Whose turn is it on the Ultra Glide? Mine, I yelled. I handed... Victor, can you please call the office? <laughs> Sorry about office. that. Victor, to call the office, please. <laughs> so you know where I am. Um, mine, I yelled. I handed Mama yakety yak. <laughs> I may have to play that again for you all today. Um, I handed Mama yakety yak. Oh, and they all moaned. Dad stuck his hand out of the window just as the song came on and said, Feel that coolness. It feels like you're running your fingers through silk. Me, Mama, Joey, and even Daddy Cool all did what Dad, did, Dad told us to do, and Dad was right. It felt great. Wiggle, you, wiggle your fingers in it, Dad said. We all did, and the air seemed slippery and cool as it blew on your hand. We're so high, and the air is so perfect. That do you know what I think we're doing? Dad asked. What? I think we've got our fingers in God's beard, and as we drive along, we're tickling him. Byron acted like he was going to throw up. As we drove down the mountain with our arms sticking out of the windows and our fingers wiggling in the breeze, I thought the brown bomber must look like a bug lying on its back with four skinny brown legs kicking and twitching to try to put it back on its feet. Whatever we were doing, it was the best part of the trip so far. What could be better than driving on a mountain while Yakety Yak played in cool, light air blew all, all over you? All right. Make sure you respond to the prompt, and we'll see what happens next.